Okay, we are live. <laughs> so welcome to Friends of the Arts Live, Bob and Astrid Francis. Thank you for being here today. Happy to be Thanks here. For having us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm so excited to introduce you to uh, the world through our YouTube Live today on Friends of Redondo Beach Arts. You are an amazing couple, and I'm always really interested in finding out how two fabulous creatives got together. So would you mind just sharing with us, you know, how you met, first of all? Like, how did it all start? Bob? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I've been in, uh, my career was in advertising as an art director and as a graphic designer in the advertising world. Uh, worked, uh, very fortunate to work to, for uh, uh, several fabulous agencies in Los Angeles. And when I came to one of my best posts, uh, it was in Beverly Hills at Kaidana Pearlstein. And when I walked in the door after being hired, uh, fresh new face, 32 years old, not quite as much gray hair in those days, but a lot of hair. Um, <laughs> Astrid was the one that met me in the lobby because she was the uh, office manager and HR director. Oh, okay. And so that's when, that was the first day we met. The, uh, the, uh, uh, my official greeter was uh, my now wife. Wow. <laughs> little so, did I know. <laughs> yeah, little did she know. But she did say she thought I was a hottie, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important. <laughs> so how long ago was that? That was in 1979-80, I'm thinking, right around there. We, we, we kept trying to pin it, point it, but we'd have to do more research. But right around 1980, let's say, yeah, I'd say so. Okay, so were you already kind of budding artists by then, or well, how, did, how, did, how did that all happen? Okay, I was an art director, so I went to the Art Center College of Design, now in Pasadena, uh, uh, though I started uh, when the when the school was uh, on Third Street, uh, so I've been an art guy my whole time. I when I went to junior college, I was taking art classes. When I went to Art Center, obviously I was majoring in art. I got a BFA from the Art Center in 1976. Uh, so I've been an art guy the whole time. Uh, but as an art director, you hire people to do art for you and your clients. Right. So I was, I had the great uh, uh, honor of being able to hire some of the most fabulous uh, commercial photographers and illustrators uh, in the world at that time. So I learned a lot from working with these people. Uh, and, um, and my sensibilities as far as pictorially or graphically uh, that's what I bring to this stuff. And, um, and that's really what, uh, uh, after, I, after all the work stopped in 2008, uh, subsequently I had retired for eight years. I was working on my own, doing my own thing, uh, working for large clients, primarily financial clients. And then in 2008, when everything hit the floor, uh, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands and I didn't really want to pursue the design business that hard anymore. It was just getting tougher and not as much fun. So I just started messing about with art, doing other things as well, traveling, we traveled. Uh, and so I, uh, and then I sort of discovered this kind of thing that happens, uh, as you can see with these two uh, pieces behind me. Um, so that's kind of what brought me to that. So, so how about um, Astrid? How did you um, become a painter? Have you been doing this all your life? Uh, no, uh, I was, uh, uh, my career was in advertising as an office manager and uh, HR director. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I retired, uh, I took a class at the Palace British Art Center. Oh, okay. And uh, that's how my interest in art developed. But uh, as a young person, uh, although I didn't paint, uh, I was always uh, exposed to creative uh, projects, uh, making my own clothes, uh, designing my jewelry, wow. uh, helping my friends uh, decorate their apartments. So oh, okay. I was in that direction without knowing it. 
And uh, when I retired, uh, like I said, I went to art classes and uh, uh, then really uh, jumped into it uh, with both feet and uh, realized that I could have a lot of fun with this. So do you still do um, any like fashion design or uh, interior or jewelry or anything like that? No, I still make my own clothes, some of them. I, I, uh, I order clothes and uh, I take them apart sometimes because I don't quite uh, like what I expected and, uh, uh, and then create something new. Okay. <laughs> kind of a fantasy in clothing. Well, but, every time I see you, I can tell you have a real fashion sense. And now I know that you're actually creating it yourself, which is pretty cool, I think. Thank you. But uh, the, then uh, uh, I no longer make jewelry. Uh, I got kind of burned out after five years doing that. But uh, now I paint almost every day. So um, so the two of you, I, I when we were talking earlier, I love the story of how uh, everything came together in terms of Bob becoming a photographer is Bob, you were kind of playing around with Astrid's jewelry when she was selling jewelry, right? Can you tell yeah. us that? Yeah, uh, many years ago, uh, Astrid was doing primarily strung jewelry, uh, which was, it wasn't beading, she took it to the next level. But anyway, so she was going to do the Manhattan Beach uh, Hometown Festival where they have the art show along the Ardmore Valley corridor. Right. Uh, that was many, many years ago. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I found that I, I wanted to do something for her booth, her pop-up, her 10 by 10. Mm -hmm. And so I, I built a case for her so she could put these gorgeous pieces in there. And then I did a graphic uh, for the back wall of the tent, which included shots of her jewelry. So I didn't have a digital camera in those days. Digital cameras were just coming out. Uh, and I wanted to quickly get a hold of these, get these shots and get them up on the wall. So uh, I found that you could put those in a scanner and you could scan these images and then uh, print them out on a big Canon printer that we had at the agency I was working at at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was able to do these 11 by 17 shots of her jewelry because I just laid it on the scanner, put a cloth over it, and then the scanner took a picture of her, her piece. Um, and then I printed it out on this big old early digital printer. Uh, and it worked great. And I thought, well, good. Then I guess a scanner is literally is a camera in a box with a top on it. And uh, so anyway, so that was, you know, decades ago. Uh, and then let's say around, around 2008, about the time the phone stopped ringing for my graphic design business, um, my head started ringing with, oh, what am I gonna do to us? So I was playing around with a leaf that I'd found in the garden that was astonishing. It was a, a dead leaf of all things. And, and it just had these wonderful colors and so on. Um, and, I, and I put it on the scanner and I thought, well, wow, that'd be cool. Let's see what happens if I take a picture of a leaf on the scanner, right? With all white background. Uh, in this case, I did close the top. And the, uh, the image that I got astonished me because it was incredibly high resolution. And it, you could see like specks of dust, specks of pollen, of the little hairs on the leaf. I mean, I was just going, wow. And then the color was amazing. Um, I'm sorry I don't have that for you today. I'd hope to do that, but uh, somehow it's missing for the moment. But imagine a leaf about gay big and, uh, and you could see it like this big. And it just astonished me. So that sort of was my impetus to get going on this stuff. And so I started taking other things. I mean, on my right, uh, that is the center of a peony. Wow. Flower that's about this big. Right. And on my left is a, a burst pod from a milkweed plant. Oh, cool. Uh, we don't have those out here so much. It's an right. East Coast kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when the pod, uh, which is this ugly looking thing with these little tentacles on it, it's about this big. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, when it bursts, it's full of this silk. 
and to each little spray of silk is attached to C. Anyway, so in this piece, uh, I just have one piece of silk there, but the pod is the amazing thing on it. Yeah, you know, um, in the promo, I said, you're the epitome of opposites attract. And in my head, you know, I look at Bob with his photography, he's taking reality, you know, and then showing it to us, you know, in a magnified sense. And then Astrid, I feel like your pieces are, are fantasy and abstract. How did you come up with this technique? Well, uh, when I took classes at the Palace Virtus Art Center, uh, I started out uh, abstract, uh, uh, like everybody else in the class, with white brushes, big brushes. And uh, I did that for a while. And then uh, one day I uh, thinned uh, the acrylic down a little bit so it ran more instead of brushing it on. Uh, and uh, I, I realized that uh, there were some shapes I could maybe work with. Instead of a big brush, just pour it on and uh, see what develops. And uh, that's how I came up with this technique. Uh, my instructor, Frank Minuto, at the Palace Brothers Art Center uh, encouraged me. Uh, he said, that's it. Stop brushing the, the big brush. They have found your media cool. uh, your medium, and uh, you should go that direction. And that's how I developed it. From, uh, to pouring down acrylics. Uh, let them dry, and then uh, uh, with time, after uh, after pouring several coats, I see uh, some other worldly figures coming up uh, that speak to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I can uh, uh, explain it in one of the uh, paintings that I did. Do please do. Of last year, can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, here I painted the background first uh, with a fairly dark blue. And uh, then uh, I sprayed with a little spray can a few drops uh, to make it not strictly blue, but to give it some texture, uh, uh, little sprinkles here and there. After that, uh, I poured on, uh, I laid flat the canvas, it's not on an easel, and I poured on uh, some colors and let them run. And, uh, and then uh, after they dried, uh, I put some more. Here, where you see two trees, I put a thin line and I thought, this could be a tree. Why not uh, uh, incorporate another tree on the, on the side? And then these two figures, I felt they speak to each other. And uh, then uh, as I kept on pouring, I thought, well, maybe I'll give them a third uh, 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 creature. And uh, once all of that is dried, uh, you can't really tell what the outcome will be. Uh, then I take very small brushes and I start with little dots and I outline the shapes. And eventually halfway through, you can tell which direction it is going to head. And uh, then I really know where I'm going. I do not know when I start out uh, where this is taking me. There's no concept that I have. It is a surprise to me. Wow. And I do remember that uh, uh, because I used to say paint like a child without fear. And so I do, I just throw it on there and wait for the surprise. That's a great, uh, great motto to follow. Paint like a child without fear, I love it. And uh, here uh, I didn't, uh, what they call mixed media. I didn't only use acrylic uh, on the, uh, some of the figures, I inserted beads. I had beads left over from my jewelry days. Oh, okay. And I glued those as a, a, a necklace uh, for some of the figures. Here too, and here too. And I also used some metal foil, uh, 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 silver foil and gold foil to give it some spark. I incorporated that. So the end result is what you call mixed media. Wow, it's, it's phenomenal. And I know uh, you both have websites that have your galleries, so we can take a look at things a little bit more closely too, right? Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Great. We both have a website, and so people can really follow what, uh, uh, where our work is going, which direction. Yeah, and luckily yeah. enough, uh, we were able to get our names. So I'm bobfrancis.com, and Astrid is astridfrancis.com. 
So oh, great. Yeah, pretty, that's, pretty that's easy to remember. Find those. Yeah, yeah. We'll, make sure, uh, we'll make sure we get those in the show notes. I'll, I'll have all the links sure. in there too. So uh, Astrid, how long does it take you to create one of your masterpieces? Uh, it takes me uh, between uh, three to four weeks. It depends on the size. Some of my canvases are very large. Uh, some of them are smaller. I prefer large canvases. The bigger they are, the more fun I have with it. And the more I enjoy it, the pouring, because with a small canvas, you're limited with your pouring uh, process. But uh, I would also like to add, uh, I was invited uh, to an artist exchange to Thailand uh, in 2019 as one of 10 artists. Wow. From the United States. Uh, one that was added from Italy. And Bob came with me and we spent three weeks in Thailand and I uh, participated in workshops with artists from all over the world. Wow, that's fascinating. How interesting. Uh, yes. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so uh, I paint outside in general uh, because for the canvases, with the pouring, I have to put it on a big tarp so the, the paint can run and it's hard to do inside. Uh, but once the background is done and the uh, and the, the paint is poured, I can paint anywhere uh, uh, with the tiny little brushes that I work. The reason it is so time consuming is because of the tiny brushes. Uh, it takes just really a lot of time to dot, 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 you know, and uh, so, yeah. Cool. And Bob, how long does it take you to... Um, you know, go from looking at something that you're saying, wow, I can really do something with that to, you know, the end product. Well, it takes, uh, uh, if I really rush, I try to do it quick. I find, oh, this is a great specimen. <clears throat> I put it on the scanner and do several takes. I'll move it. So that'll take me a couple of hours just messing about. Uh, and then I, you know, I'll take an image, then I'll put it up on the screen. I'll say, well, is it? Ah, no, not really what I need. Let me try it again. Da, 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 da. Once I get that done, uh, the scan itself takes 15 minutes just for that slow little puppy to go across there and capture the image. I bring it into Photoshop, my digital dark room uh, in this very room. And um, and then I will mess with that for a day or two because I will, uh, I'll keep working with the image. I have to clean it up. There's a lot of dust or there's pollen or, or there's schmutz from insects uh, sometimes. So I'll clean that out of there. Uh, but I do like the decay. Uh, uh, many of my pieces are dead items like, uh, uh, like this guy. And, uh, but generally, uh, I keep them fairly clean. I don't, uh, it's, it's really, it's developing. I have to develop the black background. Uh, okay. That is part of the take. Uh, I don't add that later, uh, as some people do, do, or they seem to think that's what I'm doing. It's actually, the original image is black. It's black behind it because I turned the lights off in the room. I've taken the top off of the scanner. And so the scanner, which is a, again, a camera at the bottom of a box. Right. Glass over the top is taking a picture of whatever is sitting on the glass and everything behind it. So if behind it is black. That's what you get. So you don't have to flat, you don't flatten the scanner down. It's no, because does we call that the bug on the windshield effect. And that's not ever <laughs> attractive. Um, so you don't want to smash that little right, thing. right. Uh, I.e., like uh, uh, this one. Uh, you know, if I put the top on that, it would have ruined it. Uh, right, so that's actually, what I was curious about. I didn't realize that every. So is every uh, photograph that you have of um, a specimen like plant life is that all from a scanner, not from a camera? Exactly. Oh, this, I didn't this realize series, that. Both of these uh, and all my work. Uh, that you see that looks kind of like this. I mean, okay. I do other, <clears throat> excuse me, I do other photography, uh, but all the stuff you see like this is all done on the scanner because that is the highest resolution you can get without using a large format studio camera. 
with a digital back that cost eighty thousand dollars. So um, these uh, these are very high resolution images. Yeah, hundreds of megabytes each. Uh, some are gigabytes uh, uh, in size. Um, so that's that's how that's done. And uh, and this kind of work of mine. That Is that the here. scanner right next to you? Yeah, it's right over here. Oh, what's on the other side? Uh, I got a small printer and then I got the big bad boy right back here. That's what I was wondering about. That's the 24 okay. inch printer. Oh, wow. Um, okay. That, that printed these two pieces. Okay. Uh, and anything 24 inches that now it could go 24 by 24. These are square. Uh, but I could go 24 by 30, 24 by 36. So I can, as long as it's not wider than 24 inches, I can print it on this big Epson bad boy here. Wow. Um, I do print larger uh, and I will go to a color lab for that, uh, specialty labs. There's two of them that I use in Culver City. Uh, and I've print, in fact, right now I'm printing for a client a 60 inch version oh. of this guy right here. Oh, wow. 60 inches. That's five inches, five feet wide. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Is that for, yeah. for like a home installation? Or? Yes, it is. It's actually, she's uh, this woman, uh, a friend of ours bought a new home in Healdsburg up north in Sonoma County. And uh, and she's it's going to be the centerpiece of her new dining room. Oh, I love that. I love that. That big guy right up there on the wall in her dining room. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, um, you know, I know when the pandemic started, it really, you know, shook us all up and impacted us in so many different ways. And you both um, attend a lot of different and, and participate in a lot of different gallery events and um, things like that. So can you tell us, you know, how did the uh, pandemic impact you? Astrid, go ahead. Astrid? Did we lose her? Oh. oh. How about Bob? Okay. <laughs> I'll speak for my missing wife. Uh -huh. um, it didn't impact us. Oh, there she is. Uh, it didn't impact us uh, as far as creative. I mean, we work at home alone anyway. Okay. Uh, what it did affect, well, in fact, Astrid got very prolific uh, during the pandemic and did a number of works. Yeah, um, so you had more time to just kind of hunker down and... Well, sure, because we weren't traveling uh, or, or seeing a lot of friends or going to any events or having any events. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just sat around creating. Um, and uh, But the thing that did hurt us all, and I'm sure uh, the artists that we're talking to right now that are out there, uh, they all experienced the same thing, which was nobody showing art. It live. Right. Uh, there were no shows. Uh, California 101 uh, didn't happen yeah. uh, for two years. And then we, um, uh, none of our other shows, we were showing at a gallery, uh, belonged to a gallery in Culver City, very nice gallery on, on uh, uh, La Cienega. Uh, they had to stop operating, in fact, sadly closed. Uh, so there was nowhere to show your art. Uh, live. Uh, you right. can do it online. And as we found that that's sort of a mixed results, uh, right. we are moving forward with that. Uh, and there'll be a note uh, in the here that there is a, a new platform that we're uh, going with uh, online, uh, a dealer, art dealer online. Oh, right. um, but, but, it's, but it's always better to see the art. I mean, people especially if they're not familiar with your art, not, they're not familiar with my art. I mean, my art looks great even on this dopey video, but, um, um, but, it, it, but to see it in live is, is, a, is a whole nother experience. And, it, and that's really true with Astrid's work. You gotta go up and look at it. And when you do, there's gonna be a smile on your face. You're gonna enjoy the hell out of it. Uh, so so that's, that's really, uh, that Will you? Um, so, are you back in the back on the road um, showing? I know you just recently were in the um, Palos Verdes Art Center. Or yes, that... 
Um, and then do you have, what's coming next? Are there other shows? Are things opening up a little bit for you to be showing in person? Yes. We've started talking to some people um, about that. Uh, there's some shows, uh, some hard wall art fair type shows that are coming up, but uh, uh, advisedly, uh, I guess they are being very careful about whether they are going to in fact uh, do their show because of the unknown factor of COVID now. Right. Um, I know that, uh, uh, so, so we're sort of in limbo. Just, yeah, I can't, I can't. Yeah. There's a number that we're talking to these people or we're working with them or we've submitted work and, but they are yet to decide because they just don't know if it's going to be worth it for them uh, to open up. So, uh, well, we'll make sure, um, just make sure you let us know oh, for sure. uh, when you find out because we'll be able to promote that on uh, Friends of Redondo Beach Arts. Facebook and Instagram so that everyone um, can either attend or watch virtually if there's any virtual events like that. So that would be really great. Is there anything else I forgot to ask you that we need to know? Astrid, anything? Uh, we uh, just to add a little bit uh, to what Bob uh, said about uh, uh, upcoming exhibits. Uh, there, uh, there's an annual uh, exhibit every year uh, 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 by Saatchi, uh, Saatchi Art at the uh, Santa Monica uh, Barca Hangar. And oh, we have I love those. Yeah, and we have submitted our work, both of us, uh, but we haven't heard back yet, uh, and they have not committed to a date. They just announced it as a spring show. But uh, with the pandemic going in different directions and the, the numbers going up uh, presently, uh, there's no commitment uh, made on either side. So, uh, and uh, we always submit our work to virtual exhibits. Uh, we did that throughout the last two years. But like Bob already explained, a virtual uh, exhibit is, is not what, uh, 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 you know, uh, where you can see it in person. Right, so, right. We'll just have to wait it out and see how it goes. Okay, well, like I said, we'll make sure uh, we promote any of the shows uh, because you know everybody loves to go to a gallery. And especially, I know sometimes that you are even there to explain your art, which makes it you know so much more meaningful yes. for everybody. Yes. And, uh, uh, and the prospective buyer, he really wants to see the art. Uh, he wants to look at it. Right. I think, I feel, that's how I feel about buying art. And uh, so there's a big difference between the virtual show and in person. Uh, I hope that California 101 uh, will come through this year because we have always participated. Right. They have always enjoyed it. It's a great show in the South Bay. So we'll have to see. Well, good. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, I'll make sure, like I said, I get all of the detail about your website and your contact information on the, in the show notes and let us know when the next exhibit is coming. Thank you, Mickey. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Mickey. I really appreciate it.